Ils sont faits de pluie C'est le magicien en clair My government will assist you in any way you wish. Mr. Secundus has it in mind to establish a school for magicians. I think this will suit our purpose nicely. Gentlemen, you of all people should know that Gilbert Norrell does not look favorably on other magicians. But you are his equal, Mr. Strange. You are his equal. Look at what one magician has been able to accomplish. Only consider what two might do. The doctor's found nothing. I'm sorry. Magic cannot cure madness. Send him to Portugal. I'm astonished you would even suggest such a thing. Every man must be prepared to make sacrifices for his country in time of war. Jonathan, when I saw Lady Pearl at Harley Street, I promised her that I should tell you something. What is it? She told me that he awoke to find the carpet covered in legions of tiny people about two inches high. They rode white polecats. Lady Pole is not in her wits. She hates Mr. Norrell, Jonathan. Mr. Strange should know what kind of a man he is dealing with. What a strikingly attractive woman. Visit Lady Poe. How very Christian of you. How is she? She's very well. So Walter puts me off with one excuse after another. It is always the same. Her ladyship is unwell or a little better, but never quite well enough to see anybody. Apart from you, it would seem. If she is ill, then of course the rabble must be kept away. But I saw her when she was a corpse. Oh, yes. You know, some people think that her resurrection has made her proud and unwilling to mix with ordinary mortals. But I think the truth is quite different. I think it has bred in her a taste for morbid experiences. What do you say? I beg your pardon, Mr. Drawlett, but I'm quite unable to give you the information that you require. It'll be found out in the end. I always find it out. Odious, odious little man. I'm sure to see you so occupied, my lady. This would look very pretty with little flowers sewed on the sleeve. You may cut up those dresses. But they 
are so very fine. Perhaps I have a more important use for them now. Is this your wedding dress? Cut it up. M my lady, it may seem a long time distant, but you may have a daughter one day. It would give you great sorrow. I'll have no daughter. I would not offer up a child, least of all a little girl. They save up all their children to pay off their tithes to the Lord of Hell. What does your ladyship sow? Lost hope. And who do you sow it for? For you. She is as secret as the grave, sir. There is no gossip to be had about Lady Pole anywhere in town. I fear we shall never discover her secrets. There. folks of letters, I'll be off to see a man about to school. This is strange. Oh, mister. How is your husband? Is he still wherever he is? I, I have not heard from him. He is sure to be bored at home, madam, as soon as he has tasted war. I might find Wellington. Lord Wellington yeah. is not in Lisbon. Well, where am I to find him? Lord Wellington does not stay in one place, sir. Lord Wellington goes wherever he is needed. And Lord Wellington is needed everywhere. Lordship's in the line, sir. Ah, oh, the lines. The capital, the capital. Oh, Shall we go to one of your friends and find out what the lines are? Then? I say. White spell! Gunpowder! White spell! Yes, sir! Right away, sir! Hello. I'm the magician. I indeed. White spell! Yes, sir! Do you by any chance know when Lord Wellington will come back? I do not. Lord Wellington is... In the lines, yes. Yes, I know. They're only shooting squirrels. Moral well, is quite correct. The position of magician is by no means well enough respected. Wine spell! I have them, sir! Some idiot was sitting in front. were perfectly clear, I think, you were to take the cannon into the caves at Cartaxa. In fairness to ourselves and the port Send to Hawkins, Lord. ask him how he considers we feed 200 men on eight chickens. Yes, my lord. You and the Portuguese drew attention to the convoy, got my new artillery captured. I had considered you my best intelligence officer, Grant, and gravely disappointed. Who the devil do you think you are? The magician, my lord. Norris? Um, Norrell, my lord. But he is in London. 
I am strange. Indeed. Grant, talk to Capitan Sawnil and the Guerrieros. Offer them as much gold as they can fill their pockets with. I must have those guns for the advance. My lord. Uh, my lord. What I chiefly require, sir, is more artillery and more men. Can you make them appear? Is this an interesting question, my lord? Um, in, in the book De Generibus Artem Magicarum... I don't care about the book De Generibus Artem Magicarum, sir. Can you make them appear or not? I can make it rain, my lord. It's rained all winter, so you just stop raining. You and this other gentleman have been a great nuisance to the army, sir. These visions you've shown the ministers have convinced them they know how matters stand in Portugal. They do not. Only I know what needs to be done in Portugal, sir, because only I am acquainted with all the circumstances. What I say is I have no need of a magician here. I could bring down a plague of locusts upon the French, my lord, or, 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 or frogs. You do just as good to drop roast chickens on them, sir. Good night. It looks very splendid, sir. Kill the mass. You cannot do this, sirs. You must give up this notion. You'll get to know, sirs, and it will be better that you wind up the business before he does. I did not sign that agreement. Do you think it matters? You must choose some other business. Not a school for magicians. The next time I hear that a lord or a lady is need of such a place, I'll send them your way. I do not want another kind of business. I'll be seeing you. This is tyranny, sir. This is tyranny! Damn you, Jordan sir! Jordan Plain! And damn Mr. Norrell! This way of doing business will come back and haunt him! Well, my lady, your tapestry has come a long way. It is for you. To show the freedom that has been taken from me. Come closer, I will show you. So, this is Stephen. This is Stephen the King-to-be. Here I am with the rose at my mouth. The reason I cannot speak clearly of it. Will you write to your husband of this? Well, I write to my husband of everything. I hope my letters cheer him. One from him would certainly cheer me. Oh, we live in blackness and misery all the days of our lives. My lady, you are surrounded by many wonderful things. The love of your husband. Do you not consider it a blessing? My husband's love has never done me any good. Never shortened a dreary ball by so much as a minute. Do you consider your husband's love to have ever saved you from anything? Well, I think I'm more in the habit of saving him. Mr. Strange is not the most patient of men. Often when people hector him about magic... You will tell him. You will write to Mr. Strange. Uh, if your ladyship wishes, of course. Yes. He is the king. Of lost hope. It's very striking. I thought I had explained myself. I'm making it for you. I'm very flattered. It is not a present for you because you are my particular friend. It is because you are the only person who will see me. It is because your husband is who he is. Milady. Stephen. Perhaps Mrs. Mr. Strange, I cannot say it to you. I must show it. Lady Paul is there. Mm -hmm. Tell your husband. Stephen, does she see? She doesn't see. My lady. See. She doesn't see. It is not easy for me to ask, Sir Walter. I, I hope you do not take it amiss. But it is a very hard thing for a lady or, or anyone to fix their mind upon cheerful thoughts when their circumstances are so enclosed and, and dreary. Do you suppose I have not done everything I can for my wife? Oh, I mean... She does not have the will to go out. Bells, crowds, society, all these things distress her. And if... Forgive me, Mrs. Strange, this is to remain strictly between ourselves. If she is allowed freedom to go about the house, she has more than once hurt herself very badly. Can you not speak to Mr. Norrell? Mr. Norrell says that magic cannot cure madness. She was not mad before the magic. She was dead, madam. Perhaps there was some irregularity with the spells. I asked Mr. Strange about that. He could not bring himself to broach the subject with his tutor. Your wife has asked me to write to my husband, sir, and to tell him all of the details of To her. the world beyond the doors of Harley Street, madam, beyond ourselves, Noel, and her doctors, my wife is merely unwell. 
You made me a promise when you asked if you might continue to visit her that you would say nothing of what she told. I expect you to keep that promise, even between husband and wife. Desire, Stephen. The very thing that she would give her world for. Sir, must you take people like this from the order of their house, from those who love them? Oh, who loves her, Stephen? Not the magician. He has abandoned her. Who loves Lady Paul with her dreary disposition? And who loves you? No, it is best for you all to be at my house, where it is known you're of kingly birth and no one frowns at this. I'm so very tired, sir. We must listen to her, Stephen. We must pay very close attention to what she says and what she does. We must find the correct moment. And when we have it, Carry her to Lost Hope, where she will be loved and admired as no man has loved or admired her before. Good evening, gentlemen. Devil of the job, keeping the dust out of one's tobacco. It is, sir. Would you like some of that? Thank you, sir. Drink, sir. Thirsty. Thank you. What is it that you chiefly desire? What could a chap help you with? Well, I, I know it is an odd question. Magic woman, sir. Toasted bloody cheese. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Jeremy. Excuse me, sir. Uh, you're the fellow with all the books, isn't it? Do, do you need... Magic? Um, no. <clears throat> Sir? My dearest Ned, it pains my heart to say it to you, my love, but... But what? <clears throat> but I have spoiled our wedding china by spilling a pan of jam upon it. Bloody old bitch. Who is it, then? Thomas Potter, eh? Bloody Thomas Potter! Sorry, Ned. I'm expecting a parcel. Does she not say anything about me boots? Boots? I asked her to send new boots, sir. I'm sorry, she... She merely sends her love. Damn Portuguese roads, the... Tear a man's boots to ribbons. What's the use in love when she could have sent boots? Bring it up, Ned. It's down, it's down. Night, sir. Night.
Evelyn Wilson called out. Evelyn! <laughs> <laughs> ah, been sleeping in the mountains, have you? Have some breakfast. Thank you, my lord. How do you like the war, Mr. Uh... Oh, it was rather confusing at first, but I grew used to it. I have been robbed once. I have been shot at once. Once I found a Frenchman in the tent and had to chase him out. And once the house I was sleeping in was set on fire. By the French? No, no, sir, by the English. It was a company of the 43rd who were very cold that night. Set fire to the house to warm themselves. Oh, that always happens. Finest fellows in the world, British Army. I heard your lordship refers to them as the scum of the earth. Well, they're both. <laughs> One at the same time. Yes. We've been talking, arguing rather, about magic, how it's done. Major Grant here says that you and this other chap have given every word in the Bible a number. And then you think of words to make up a spell, and you add up the numbers and then... That, that is not what I said, my lord. You, you have not understood at all. I'm afraid I've done nothing resembling it. it. Seems rather complicated and I do not think it would work. As to doing magic, my lord, there are many procedures, as many, I dare say, as for making war, good and evil. Can a magician kill a man by magic? I suppose a magician might. But a gentleman never could. This road, sir, which you've been so good as to offer us, what sort of road would it be? Be Stokesy, Jim. Really, I have hardly any criticisms to make. It's an excellent road. Only make it a little straighter tomorrow, if you will. Merlin. Uh, not Merlin, my lord, if you please. Why have not? Well, uh, Merlin, if indeed he existed, was a very vagabonding type, not, not the modern kind of magician at all. Uh, Miss Nor and I are endeavouring to make magic respectable, my lord. You'll have a job, sir. This is war. Sir, I've got to call you something. <laughs> Strange. Ah. Well, then it is then. <laughs>
Artık tutun abi. This post boy is he to be trusted. I'm giving him a pound a week. What does the letter say? Deal about love. He writes to her of love and doggerel poems, and she writes to him of heartache and dress. I'm not easy about this business, Mr. Noel. I have to say it. There, you have said it. I want to know what the matter is. If you wish my assistance in these matters, these concerns are not frivolous or prurient, Gildemas. I should think you knew me better. I know you very well. I'm concerned, Lady Bowman. Why, well, you know, she is visited by Mrs. Strange. I am concerned that they talk. Well, naturally, they talk. They are women. What should they talk about that might harm you, Mr. Noel? If you tell it me, it may be I can help. There is something. There's another encampment over the other side of the forest, my lord. French soldiers of the Ninth, and they have with them all of the armaments from Cartaxo. A cannon. My pretty new artillery. Exactly so, my lord. Now, if we were to take the Seventh up no, along the hills... No, that take too much time. I'm in a hurry. Where's the magician? Yes, sir. I would counsel my lord against placing too much reliance on... Yes, Grant, I'm sure he would. Ah, oh, there you are. There, the assorted gentlemen of the Seventh Division. Over here, General Delon's French, with their backs to us. Now, if you'd be so kind as to move this forest, I think it might very well give them an unpleasant surprise. A forest, my lord? Mm. That is a different kind of magic to that which... It is not modern magic. So? It is not straightforward. I, I would think one would have to negotiate with the trees. You've moved churches, rivers and so forth. I cannot think it'd be so difficult to move a forest. It's a very large. These are living things, my lord, that they will have humours of their own. They may not care for soldiers. Perhaps we have reached the limits of your abilities, Mr. Strange. Grant, daylight. Take a few men and escort Mr. Strange into the forest. Do your best to see he's not shot. At least till he's moved it. My lord. We wait your convenience, sir. Here, let me pack my books. Which one, sir? All of them. Crunch and crackle like that, Mr. Strange. I have no wish to disturb the French. It is lunchtime. They will not be happy. Let's find the oldest tree. It's much of an age to me. Perhaps we should cut them all down and count the rings. This one, perhaps. Jeremy! Heavensy.
trees. His Lordship asked you to move these trees, not lead them in song. Do your work quietly, sir. I am trying. Quiet. You have drawn their notice. Quiet! Fence firing! On your right side! Steady! Mr. Strange, move this forest! Can I not call down this? No! They are turning their cannon about. Follow your orders. Tell me, find me, Orms Kirk. Sudden miasmas seem to be too much for them. Taking my cannon with them. I did not ask for mist, Merlin. I asked you to move those trees. I lost my books, my lord. I apologize. I've exhausted everything I know. Good mind to put you on a charge. Well, do it. You made me rely upon you, Mr. Strange. I'm not happy you let me down again. I regularly demand the impossible of my engineers, my generals, and my officers. I see no reason to make an exception in your case. I'm at the limit of my magic. Find other magic! Do not give yourself too much grief. Your mist may have lost him his cannon, but it saved our lives. Most of us. Come. Mackenzie has a burial detail. You'll see your man right. Stephen. Madam, I know it's not my place, but may I speak frankly? Of course. I do not think it's wise for you to visit her ladyship. I thought you were my friend in this, Mr. Black. I am your friend. Please believe it. But I fear there is danger for you. Lady Paul, Madam, please believe uh. me. Uh, uh. I dare so 
Walter. Uh, Sir Walter, if you'd be so kind. Please excuse me. Thank you. What is your distress, madam? you be sad for her? Because she is beset by such horrors. Lady Paul has no horrors. She merely has a rose at her mouth. A rose? Why I could take that away as easy as breathing. What do you mean? That I could remove what they please to call my lady's madness. And how would you do that? I would need your help, madam. Your assent. But I should not ask for anything that would not be exquisitely desirable to you. You ask for something in return, sir. If you can do such a thing, if it is within your power to help, then for the love of God, but do not make a bargain of my friend. You will forgive me, sir. We should not meet again without my husband present. General Caffarelli was intending to bring the cannon to the French at Vittoria. The good news is that the cannon never arrived. Caffarelli made up his escort of the first 30 soldiers that came to hand. Ten of those 30 were Neapolitan. No, they indeed. It is my view that they killed the others and will shortly try to sell the cannon to the highest bidder. Why have we not heard from them? They have been sending messages to their relatives in the French army to desert and join them. They believe that with the money they will get for the cannon, they will all be able to sail back to Naples together in a golden ship. And they do not wish to return home to face their mothers and aunts without bringing their relatives back with them. Yes, I've always heard Italian women are rather fierce. But we cannot wait for 100 Neapolitans to desert. All we need to do, my lord, is find some Neapolitans and question them. They will have been informed of where the thieves are and where they have put the guns. Unfortunately, Grant, the only Neapolitans we've encountered have been dead ones on the battlefields. Sir, make yourself useful. I require a vision of some Neapolitans and some guns. So I said, my lord, visions are precisely the wrong kind of magic for this sort of thing. I must have the location of my guns by morning. Kindly bend yourself to it. Do you recognize anything, my lord? Olive groves and pine trees. Could be anywhere within 100 miles. Perhaps they're saying something useful. understand the language. It mostly concerns the food they wish they were eating and the charms of their absent wives. You married, Major Grant? The soldier has no business marrying, sir. It is unfair on the man and unfair on the wife. You did not think to come to war for jokes and picnics, Mr. Strange. I did not consider it. Sorry, Major Grant, I can think of nothing else. Perhaps you have some Neapolitans among the prisoners. No, sir, we do not. I might expect to be checked. We have some dead ones for all the good that will do us. <laughs> what? What is it? The magic I will do this night is not modern magic. In fact, it is very ancient. It is the magic of the Raven King. I do not wish it to be mentioned in dispatches. You have my word, madam. Enough, that's enough. Is that for the magic? It is for the smell. I thought I told you no one was to interfere with these corpses. And the lads has touched him, Mr. Strange. 
do not see they're so mutilated. Does it matter if they are? I suppose not. Only I have to look at them. Sharp knife, please, Nick. Dialects of hell. They've learned it very quickly. Can you speak this language? Is that Italian? Be my guess. Oh, that's more like it. Come along, Brad. That's where our guns are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quindicic canoni, a tuo amico ha rubato del generale Caprelli. Dove sono? Dove hanno messo i canoni? We have it. It's in a small town called San Giacomo on the road to Victoria. They've hidden it by the church. Uh, 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 dove sono i ladri? We'll have the guns by morning. This is it, my dear Merlin. That's easy, come. Good man. you did, sir. Madam, I was tricked. Were well, not for the very particular circumstances, I would... What I did, I did to further the cause of English magic and to help win this war in which innocent people must suffer too. What can be done? I cannot free you of this enchantment, my lady. No! You have opened a door to hell and invited the devil into England! I beg you, I beg you, to stop trying to persuade Mrs. Strange or anyone else to understand your predicament. Please, please. Do not try to communicate using tapestries or the like. It cannot do you any good. And it may cause you further harm. Uh, and it, uh, uh, further harm! How old are you, my lady? Forgive me. I'm 19. I may tell you that you will live another 75 years under these circumstances. No. I'm sorry. No! This is all! Nothing at all has changed. Thank you for your help, sir. Nothing can be gained by her excitement. I understand that certain ladies wish to occupy themselves in what they consider charity. But it seems to me that all that has been achieved has been to harm her ladyship even further. I worry that these two ladies merely Exercise one another's emotion. I would suggest that these visits are curtailed. Madam? 
Berlin? <laughs> Berlin, where are you? What the devil are you doing up there? I do not know how to make them dead again. Set them loose and let them wander in the bushes. We have the French on the run and we need to press on. His lordship is asking for you. We've not seen you in days, man. Look at them poor wretches. What do they say? They, uh, plead with you not to send them back to hell. They, uh, ask you to send them home to their little sons and daughters. There is such power in this magic. I cannot in any way reverse it. I've tried everything. Everything? Merlin, oblige me by leaving off trying to kill people who are already dead, cheering yourself up and moving the bridge at the end of the valley. The bridge, sir. Away from General Denon's French and where my cannons may cross. Victory is within our sights. And we may lance this Spanish also and return home to our wives and mistresses. That is an order. To command, my lord. Grant, knock these corpses in and set the mill on fire. They're distracting my magician, my lord. I'll lead your horse around, sir. Thank you, Ansbill. I am instructed that Lady Paul is not to receive visitors. Let me through, Stephen. This is ridiculous. Madam, please. Believe me when I tell you that it is for the best. Stephen. Madam, in 1349, there was a parson called Dumbridge. He was followed by a tiny man that dragged him into a pot to meet his many wives. I'm sorry, madam. She does not come. I have been meaning to offer you an apology, Stephen, and an explanation. No explanation is necessary, sir. My recent concern for the magician's wife has rather prevented us discussing the matter of you becoming a king. But I have begun to realize how very useful such a thing might be. It has been the cruelest thing in the world. How she has spurned me. I cannot break her resolve. The husband will soon return, and I am sorry to say, a magician is not an easy thing to kill, especially not one who seems intent on monopolizing me. But if you 
were to be a king. Sir, I have been for some years the king of my own little land in Harley Street. I flatter myself, known amongst the best servants in London. If you wish to do me a kindness... It is not unusual, Stephen, for a slave to take his master's side. The Raven King himself began life as a nameless slave in a fairy kingdom and rose to great heights. I am not a slave, sir. No man who stands on English soil can be a slave. Sir Walter's father, he was kind to me. He had been christened and educated. Christened? What was the name your mother gave you? I... I don't know. Indeed. Come. Out of my love for you, Stephen. I have prized guns out of dying men to discover your future. Magic cannot tell the future. But it can throw shadows. It is said you are to kill the king and take his place. What is this place? Why, this is the place of your birth, Stephen. Madam, what is it? Mary? I am home. Jonathan, I cannot keep my countenance if you stare at me like that. Sorry to disappoint you, but you never do look at me so very often. You always had your nose in some dusty old book. I'd entirely forgotten how quarrelsome you are, Mrs. Strange. Jonathan. Beg pardon, sir. Mr. Norrell to see you.
Some water! It's all very well for you, Henry. You have periodicals to him. You're writing your book about him. I need some new lorgnettes. Answer some of his letters. I'll give you a guinea. Tell them Mr. Norrell does not accept commissions. What on earth are you doing? This is strange, Binny. Of course he's not. Where's Norrell? Someone's doing magic here. Childermass! The cells and draw light have been in my house a great deal. I'm sure of it. But there is no talking to them of magic. No. Well, you must come to my house tomorrow. You must... Thank you. You must come for breakfast, sir. And you can tell me in great detail all the different types of magic that you employed, and you can return my books. Yes. Yes. Your books. About what is it? Square magic. What are you doing, man? Mr. Norrell's carriage. Madam.